So you've got your pink handout, and from that pink handout, you can see that there are three muscle types of tissue. So let's describe what these are. Um, the first type that you want to be familiar with is the one that is most extensive throughout the human body. It's called skeletal muscle. And by that name, you could infer that this is the muscle attached to your skeleton. This is the muscle that you use to move your human body. The second type of muscle is called cardiac muscle. And I'm guessing that most of you can guess where that is too, right? It's just found in one place, not found all over the human body. It's just found in the heart. Uh, there is a little cardiac muscle in some of the blood vessels nearby. But basically, we just think of it as being in the heart. The one that probably most people would not be able to guess where it is is called smooth muscle. This is really the muscle that is used in other parts of the body, typically places where you don't have to think about what's going on, but where something needs to be moved, like the digestive system would be a good example of this. If you're going to get, if you've got 30 feet of tube from your mouth to your anus, and you're going to get that food through there, you're not going to have a straight tube where gravity is just pulling it down. You're going to have to have some way to propel the food material from one end to the other of you. And so that's going to require some muscle. And this is the muscle type that we call smooth muscle. So three types here, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Let's look at each one in a little more detail. Um, when we talk about skeletal muscles, some of the qualities that we would attribute to it are things like it's very, very quick. Okay, it has a very, very small response time. In other words, you can just respond very, very quickly. Um, I remember when I was a teenager and, and I was taking driver's ed, they had this little system where they could time how quick you could get from the gas pedal to the brake pedal. And I remember everybody trying to just be as fast as they could, you know. Uh, but, but think of sports activities where you've got somebody, you know, like a, a, a batter in baseball that's got to hit, you know, a 100-mile-an-hour pitch. You know, you, you've got to have a response time that's just instantaneous. Or a hockey goalie trying to grab a, a hockey puck coming at him at 100 miles. Or a tennis player. There's many sports where, where balls or pucks or whatever move very quickly, and your response time, once your brain says, I need to do this, you need to be able to move very quickly. This, this can be built to be very strong tissue, too. We, we see people that do some amazing <laughs> muscular feats. The term voluntary here is referring to the fact that this muscle is under your conscious control. Okay, that this is under your conscious control. So there's a fast response time. It can be trained for strength. And this is under your conscious control. The other two types of muscle you're going to see, we're going to call involuntary. Do you have anything to say about your heartbeat? Can you slow it down right now or speed it up? Can you influence your digestion? Can you say, oh, let's digest a little slower, a little faster, right? These are things that are not under your conscious control. And the, the medical and, and biological terms here are voluntary and involuntary. In a sense, you can volunteer this. You can, you can make it work. Okay? Now, the one negative here probably, though, is this, is, this muscle type fatigues easily. There's, I guess, always trade-offs in muscle. You can't have everything when you've got one type of muscle. And so this muscle can be trained to go on and on and on, but at some point it does fatigue. Compare that to, say, your heart. Does your heart fatigue? Does your heart ever quit? You know, it doesn't. When you think of how many times your heart has beat over your lifetime, as young as some of you are, <clears throat> you know, your heart has still beat over and over and over again tens of thousands of times. 
more than once a second for an entire lifetime. So if you calculated how many seconds you'd be you've been alive, it would be it would be more than that because the heart typically beats faster than that. But skeletal muscle, if you just use it and use it and use it over and over and over again, at some point it just doesn't want to work anymore, and it's got to have a rest and recuperation. <coughs> so, so a lot of plus here, but but some minus. If we look at cardiac muscle, we have many of the same qualities here. Cardiac muscle does not have quite as fast a response time as skeletal muscle, and, and typically not. But that's very important, very important, because the heart must pause. In any heartbeat, there has to be a pause. You can't just keep beating very, very fast. If the heart does not pause, it doesn't fill with blood so it can pump blood back out. Hearts get in trouble when they beat too fast. We say they go into fibrillation or even into flutter. When a heart's in flutter, all it's doing is just shivering. The muscles are squeezing so fast that there's never a pause to fill with blood. So the heart is moving, but it's not pumping any blood. And fibrillation does the same thing. Fibrillation is... Is there's a tiny little pause, but it's so small that the heart can't fill with blood. So when the heart beats too fast, it doesn't pump any blood at all. So hearts are built with a natural sort of medium response time, so there's always a contraction and a pause, a contraction and a pause. It's, it's strong for its size. The heart beats 100% or nothing. There's no 50% heartbeat. There's no 30% heartbeat. Every time the heart contracts, it gives 100% of its ability. And as we said before, this is the term for something. Your brain is able to control your heart rate. But this is not an area of your brain that you have any conscious control of. Sometimes you hear of people that may be able to slow down their heart rate through meditation. They're sort of going in the back door. They're creating an emotional state where your heart normally beats slower. They're not directly controlling the heart. They're just creating a condition that leads to a certain outcome. So this is involuntary muscle. And one of the strong points here is, yes, it does not fatigue. It does get a rest, but that rest is, is just a tiny little fraction of a second. After each contraction, there is a tiny little fraction of a pause, of a tiny little rest. But, you know, it's, it's so small. If you had a weight in your arm, and you were going to start doing this, and you gave it a little bit of a pause... Still, after maybe five minutes, you'd just be, ah, you know, just your, your skeletal muscle would just not work anymore. But the heart has been doing that your entire lifetime. This is an amazing muscle right here. Now, the third type is smooth muscle. And this is a good example of where we'd find it, but we find it all over the place. Um, your blood vessels, um, typically, when we talk about where we find this, a good, a good rule of thumb is hollow organs and tubes. Like the tubes of your digestive system or a hollow organ like your stomach. Um, if you remember us last week talking about the levels of organization, we used the picture from your textbook. We talked about the uh, urinary bladder. We talked about the urinary bladder, right? We were, we were describing a layer of tissue called smooth muscle tissue. Right? So the, the urinary bladder, the tubes leading from your kidneys to your bladder have muscle in them, and they, they literally pump up the bladder with urine. Um, a woman's uterus, uh, the little tubes carrying sperm from, from the male testes toward the penis squeeze those little sperm along. They don't, they don't mature to where they can swim much until much later than that. Um, your blood vessels, all your digestive tract, the tubes that lead into your lungs, 
So generally we think of this muscle being in hollow organs and tubes throughout your body where movement needs to take place, but you typically don't have any control over this. This response time here is typically very slow. Um, if you look at somebody's eye and shine a light in it, you will see their pupil get small. That is smooth muscle. Right? You don't have any control over that. That is about as fast as smooth muscle ever moves, is the movement of a, of a pupil. And it doesn't need to be fast, because all of these activities are sort of plodding activities. Digestion is sort of a plodding thing. You know, any of those, any of those kinds of activities. So we don't, we don't need fast response here. This is involuntary. <clears throat> it's not under your conscious control. Other parts of your brain do control this. And this muscle, too, does not fatigue. And we'll go into this more when we do finally talk about it, uh, about muscle in more detail. But it's interesting because this muscle has a little locking mechanism. So what it does is after it contracts, it can then sort of lock itself in place, and then it doesn't take any more energy. The, you know, it would be like if you, if you were going to hold up something big, if this was big and heavy, and I could just sort of lock my joints here, I could hold this up forever, right? But, you know, with my skeletal muscles, they're using energy to, to hold this contraction in place. My muscles are using energy, using, 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 using. And so at some point, they're going to be using up the energy, and, and I'm going to fatigue. This, this muscle is constructed, so it has this unique sort of mechanism by, whereby it can hold on. So those are your three types of muscle and some of their characteristics. Obviously, when we get to the test, I'm going to ask you some questions along these lines. All right. um, the last tissue type, then, is nerve tissue. And as we said before, this is, this is what we want to describe as just a single tissue. There aren't different types of nerve tissue. It's all one thing. Characteristics we described earlier. Um, your histology handout really has the description of all of those different um, types. What the, the essence of what we said was that the tissue is very complex at a cellular level. That there are different types of cells mixed into this tissue. When I think of a tissue, I usually think of one type of cell and matrix. This is a tissue where there's a blend of both neurons, which are the actual actors, which are the ones that are sending signals to different places of the body. They're talking amongst themselves to make decisions. And then these glial cells, we said these were like the support <coughs> cells for the, for the tissue. These are helping to provide nutrition and support and insulation and a number of other qualities for the neurons. Neurons are sort of the high, highest specialized cells in your human body, and so they need help to survive. Okay? So that's, that's really the essence of it. Any questions here? We're good?